Coming to you live from Centre Court at Hot Sands Beach in Kelowna, BC, it's high-flying volleyball action at its best as Shaw TV presents the 2013 Centre of Gravity Women's Beach Volleyball Finals. getting set for the Pro Beach Volleyball Finals here at Center of Gravity. We're starting out with the women's final, followed by the men's final. I'm Kevin Chirac, alongside Wes Webb. Now, Wes, what can you tell me about this women's final here? Because I heard we have a little bit of a uh, U.S.-Canada rivalry going on. Oh, we definitely do. We have the out-of-towners from uh, California. They're becoming in against the heavy favorites, Melissa Humana and Taylor Pischke from, uh, from Canada here today. Nice. So, Wes, you actually played in this tournament. This is your second year here. What can you tell me about the caliber, the quality of players in this volleyball tournament? This tournament is all top notch. We have players coming in from Alberta, from out of town, uh, all across Canada, especially from the United States here. So um, it's some of the best players that you're going to see around. Perfect. And as for this final, I actually heard that uh, there's no real favorite. It should be a very even match. Uh, talk to me a little bit about the teams. Have you seen them play at all? I've seen Melissa and, uh, and Taylor play before. They're reigning national champions, number one in Canada up and coming on the beach circuit internationally, so they could push the Americans for a run for their money today. Great, should be a great match, and uh, looks like they're getting set to go. Let's make our way to center court for the Pro Beach Volleyball Women's Final. All right, we're getting ready to go here, making our way to center court. Looks like Team U.S. is starting out. Cat Peening with the serve. And there's a point. Taylor Pischke over the net. One nothing for the Team Canada. Yeah, she was able to slip that under the block. Nice point. Melissa Humano with the serve now. Jump serve. comes a spike. Spike again, and they got a piece. Another point for Team Canada there. Melissa Humana just coming up with a big attack down the line. Americans not making that adjustment there. The team of Humana and Pishki lead two zip. Returned by Peening, and that's in. They're on the scoreboard. Talk to me about chemistry. How vital is chemistry in beach volleyball, Wes? Well, it's extremely important. You need to be comfortable with your partner. You have to understand that they're going to do their job and you're going to do yours. And the more you gel, the better it is in the end. Kim DiCello with the serve. Nice dig. Set. Humana with a spike. Oh, a little tip. And that's in. Canada leads 3-1. Melissa a little Humana. deceptive there. Yeah, de definitely. She listened to her partner on the late call, just going right over top of the block, cashing the end of the line. Her partner Taylor Pischke with the jump serve. And that's out of bounds. I mean, when you think beach volleyball, you think uh, vertical leap, you think touch, but a lot of it is about the mental ability, you know, just picking your spots. Especially in this tournament, uh, you've got to filter out through all the noise, the music. Definitely, especially oh, all very loud music. Very loud music. Counted off to a good start, taking the 4 2 lead. Melissa Humano with the serve. Kim DeCello just going a little too high on that shot. Set. Here comes a spike, returned by Humana. Another set, Humana with a spike, and it's good. Ran along the net for a little bit Ran there. Ran along the net, she got the dribbler. In volleyball, we call that the dribbler or the sniveler. Hits the net and just drops in. And how difficult are those to return? And they're all nearly impossible. There's no, there's no knowing where it's going to go. So did she plan to do that? Sometimes you say you do, but you really don't. <laughs> Humana with the serve. Canada leads 5-2. To cello, healing, and that is wide, out of bounds. 
That pinning going just a little too strong. Pishki Humana, Team Canada, leads 6-2 over DiCello and Peeney. Peening with that, again, with a nice touch. And as a defender, you really have to respect that your partner's blocking line. Your first duty is cross court. If they make a shot like that, you just have to respect that. It's a good shot. How much of the game is adapting to your opponent and learning how they play? It's a huge part of the game. You need to have a good scouting report. Uh, some of the best teams here have coaches doing those reports for them so they know what they're getting into. The more you know, the more of advantage you're at. Kim DiCello with the jump serve. Ooh. I call that serve the home record. Little in between Team Canada, Pishki and Humana there. A little lack of communication on that one. Yeah, we call that serve the hubby wife. You take it. No, you take it. Right down the middle. Set, Humana with a spike. Nice dig. Pishki again. Taylor's just so good at holding that defender in one spot, showing one thing and then doing another. So hard to read. A little background about the quality of these players. They all played university volleyball. A lot of them played pro as well. Uh, from the Team US team, Kim DiCello. She came out of Santa Clara University and played professional on the circuit in Europe and Asia. And her partner, uh, Kat Keening, uh, actually a basketball athlete, very into basketball, played small forward for Central Missouri until uh, what she said, she came to her senses and transferred over to Western Michigan, playing four years of uh, volleyball there. And now she plays on the uh, American volleyball circuit, American volleyball professionals uh, on the pro circuit in the United States. These two ladies, very, very competitive. Definitely going to give Taylor and Melissa a run for their money here today. Melissa with the spike. The cello, Peening. Cad Peening going under the block that time. That's another shot you have to master. A lot of the times you think high, sometimes you got to have that touch under the block. Peening will go back and serve as well. Peening with the jump serve. Pishki with a spike, nice dig. Peening with a spike. Cat Peening looking just so calm and collected back there, making two unbelievable hand digs and transitioning. And you can really, you can really see a display of athleticism there, just with the touch and receiving the actual uh, volleyball in hand, and then with the jumping ability for the spike, just unbelievable athleticism. Team US with the serve. Fishki setting it up. Humana. Tichello with a spike. And that's a point. Taylor going with the line and then changing it to a nobody call. Letting her partner know that the blocker is peeling off the net. Allowing her to hit multiple angles, but just unable to convert there. Team Fishki and Humana calling for a timeout. What do, what do you think they're discussing right now, Wes? They're going to talk about talking. That's a big thing about volleyball. You need to stay in communication with the loud music here and multiple sports going on. There are a lot of distractions, so you need to just get back to the basics, simplify, and talk about the game plan you came up with before the match. They got off to a great start. They led at 1.6 to 2. Now, uh, just a slim lead, 8-7. Just to let everyone at home know, uh, I believe it's basic uh, standard scoring sets, right? It's a uh, best of three, uh, up to 21 for the first two sets, and uh, the final set is uh, up to 15? Definitely. In the old system, they played something called side-out volleyball, where you could only score points on your serve. Today, we're playing a rally point system. Points are scored on every, every, every rally, so if you're missing that serve, other teams getting a point right off the bat. Which means you're never really down and out, it seems, in this game makes every other play that much more important. Peening with the serve, trailing 7-8. That one is well long. Peening just a little too aggressive there coming out of the timeout. It's got to take into account a little bit of wind we have here today. And that side switch. Let's talk about that. I mean, it's not... It's not raining, but I, I would say it's not quite ideal for, or is it ideal for beach volleyball? I mean, it's a little bit of overcast, a little bit of wind. 
This is a beach volleyball's uh, dream for weather today. Hey, if it's too hot, it's, it's hard to recover, and it's hard to breathe, and when it's raining, vision gets Im impaired. This today, overcast, the sand is nice and soft. You can ask for better weather today. Ticello and Peening, eight serving nine right here. Jump served by Ticello. Here comes a spike from Pishki. Dig, and here comes a spike. From nice return, nice dig. The spike from Humana, again, the power. That is a great transition play there. She looked like a sandbug, how fast she could move. And then just leaping high into the heavens and cutting that ball back across her body. And you gotta think, with every single step, you're sinking a bit into the sand. I mean, this isn't playing on a gym floor. Definitely not. These girls have their sand legs, for sure. Taylor Pischke, 10 serving eight. Painting with the dig. Painting with the spike. And just too much for Melissa Humana. Nice yeah, Melissa Humana, they're taking a step before contact was made. You need to be stopped and planted, able to explode to where the ball rebounds to. Even match here, nine serving 10. Peening with the serve. Jump serve, dig by Humana. Little tip over, read beautifully by DeCello. Kim DeCello looking like she's played some basketball there, denying the two ball. You know, I was actually speaking to Kim DeCello before this match. She said she said that she can dunk a tennis ball, and she's under six feet tall. That just shows just her vertical ability there. That serve goes long. That's going to ring up our technical timeout. Capening just a little too heavy there again. Technical timeout. Here we are neck and neck. The score is, oh, we're fiddling around with it, and... Uh, the team of DiCello and Peening leading the team of Pischke and Humana 11 to 10. Pischke and Humana, they're both only 20 years of age. They've started winning in their volleyball tournaments when they were 16, coming to the Vancouver Opens and Center of Gravity. And here they are today giving the uh, the experienced team of DiCello and me Peening over there a run for their money. So what type of level has uh, Pischke and Humana? Have they re are they on national level? or? Well, they both play on the junior national team, uh, having a strong showing at the Long Beach Open last weekend in uh, California. They're going to be on the radar definitely for Team Canada. Look for them in the coming years. Because he's always on time. And you see DiCello and Peening talking back and forth. What are they discussing? I mean, this is a tight game. They've taken the lead now. Are they gaining momentum? I think they're talking about uh, staying simple and keep doing what's working. They've got a slim lead here and they just need to chip away. Melissa Humana, back of the service line, her team up one, 11-10, first set. Humana with the jump serve, the cello with the dig, off the net, nice recovery. Set, here's Humana with the spike, again the cello with the block. Kim DiCello jumping up and then taking the angle at the last second. Just cutting that ball off. Point for the Americans. That seems to be a theme early in this match. How is Pishki and Humana gonna, gonna overcome that? Well, the good thing about them is they're young. Uh, they know they have nothing to lose here. They're up and coming. So I think they'll uh, regroup here. Do what they need to do. Pischke wide with the spike there to Cello Peening, gaining another point. Now leading 12-11. A little ball switch here. Nice two ball, ro ball rotation on the side. Making sure those balls are dry for the athletes. Cello with the serve. Humana with the set. Pischke with the, oh. Pischke going for the block, returned by Humana. Humana with the set. A little bit of a change up there. You saw that DiCello went up for the block and Pischke instead kind of fooled her a bit. Well, both defenders making the dig there, deciding to go against the call of their partners. DiCello and Peening coming up just a little short there. Taylor Pischke with the serve. Jump serve. Turned by Peening. DiCello, spike from Peening. Hits it over. Nice recovery, ah, and just couldn't quite get there for Humana. And Peening, peeling off the net and being able to put her partner with such a good set there, right on top of the tape, wherever hitter wants that ball, great transition.
We are dead even thus far in the first set here of the Pro Beach Volleyball Women's Final. The team of DiCello and Peening lead 13 to 12 over Taylor Pischke and Melissa Humana. Humana setting it up. Pischke tipping it over. Beautiful play. Beautiful play by Team Canada of Pischke Humana. Tie game, 13 all. Like a surgeon just cutting it right to the end, right on the lines. It's impossible to dig that ball when it's placed so perfectly. Humana with the jump serve for Team Canada. Peening and Team US. DiCello with the spike. And that's a point again for US. Kim DiCello taking a quick look before she jumped. For the up and coming beach volleyball players, you need to master that skill, looking before you jump so you can see what the defenders are doing. You really see an all around game with DiCello. Eh? I spoke to her earlier. I asked, What's your greatest strength as a beach volleyball player? She said, Winning. She responded, Winning. Well, she can and do there it, it is all. Right there. <laughs> she can do it all at the net, off the net. With the block. Delaying the block a little bit, reading, roll shot, jumping late, putting that ball down. Team US of Kim DiCello and Kat Peening taking a 15 13 lead over Taylor Pishkin and Alyssa Yamanik here in the first set. Kim DiCello with the serve. Also showing the experience here. Yamanik setting it up. Pishki with the spike. Well, Melissa with the set, moving uh, Kim just over a few feet. Kim not able to elevate at her full potential. You saw Pishki just take out her aggression on DiCello there. DiCello blocking the last few. Pishki having none of it. Trying to make a point. Pishki with the serve. Nice float. Peening, oh, beautiful play by Peening there for Team US. Just such a soft touch. Pointing her palms down the line and just turning it in at the last seconds. Cat Peening getting ready for the serve. Serving 16-14. Jump serve, returned by Humana. Humana with a spike. Blocked again, there's DiCello. Points for DiCello and Peening. Starting to sound like a broken record here, Wes. Well, also on the side of Melissa Humana and Taylor, they have the trees there. It's a little harder for the Americans to see the ball coming this way. Taylor and Melissa are on the good side now. They need to make the best of it. And that one's long. That painting serve is long point for Pishki and Humana. Humana and Pishki getting a break there, bringing the score to 17-15 for the Americans. Hopefully they can uh, bridge the gap here. Humana getting set for the serve. Jump serve by Humana, returned by DiCello. Set up by Peening, DiCello with the tip over. There's the touch again, DiCello. That's such a hard dig to make. As a partner, you're dug in cross court and just a simple pokey over top of the block. Well, she's already established herself with the spike. Now she's almost playing games out there. Tichello with the serve. Humana with a nice tip over. Nice cut shot, turning her thumb down along the ball, bringing it back to the right side of the court. 16 serving 18, Militia, Melissa Humana. Taylor Pischke trailing Kim DiCello and Kat Peening, 16 to 18. Pischke with the serve for Team Canada. The jump serve, too much. Couldn't quite get there for Kat Peening. I think she was thinking the serve was gonna come a little deeper. Pischke just taking a little bit of a touch off that ball, dropping it short. Getting down to the wire here in the first set. Taylor Pischke and Melissa Umana trailing Kat Peening and Kim DiCello, 17-18. First to 21 wins or win by two. DiCello with the spike. Tipped by Pischke, Pischke over. Could she recover? Oh my, what a play by DiCello. Great effort. Humana with the set. Pischke hammers it down, DiCello with the return. DiCello over. And just a bit long, but what a rally. Definitely what a rally. In beach volleyball, the block counts as a touch, so Pishki with a very athletic play, putting her partner back up. Able to tra transition there and get the point. You could hear the crowd appreciating that one. Effort on both sides of the net here. Tied up, 18 all 
in the first set of this Pro Beach vo women's volleyball. It looks like we have a timeout here from the Team US consisting of Kim DiCello and Kat Peening. They don't want to give the young guns anything. They want to keep the momentum on their side. Maybe have a timeout to freeze the server, give her something to think about. Now, Wes, we spoke earlier about how there's no clear favorite for this women's final. Uh, they're pretty tight, and you know what? It's uh, living up to advertise. 18-18. Just now, the simplest, the littlest, most, most, the smallest mistake that you make can cost you the set here. So these teams just want to make sure they're on the same page. Just a little background about this tournament. There's 24 teams entered for the women's and 24 for the men's. It is a double elimination, so if you lost one, say, you know, in the first few rounds, you could always make the final with a backdoor entry. And uh, these teams just, uh, this in this women's final, we're seeing just the quality of this tournament. There's also the money that you can win at the end of the tournament. First place taking home 3,000. Second place taking home $1,500. Yeah, that's always nice. <laughs> always some added incentive. Taylor Pischke with the serve here. Jump serve, Pischke, returned by DiCello. Set up by Peening. DiCello with the hammer down. Pischke, Humana with the tip over. Again, Humana with that touch. Kim DiCello looking to block the hard driven, penetrated just a little too much. Gave Melissa Humana some room for the poke over line. Tishki Humana lead 19 18 here. In this crucial opening set in the women's volleyball finals. Tishki with the serve. Dig by DiCello. DiCello coming up with a spike. Hammers it down. Just inside, point for DiCello and Peening. Ball just catching the line. Struck that ball down like hitting the ball across her body with her thumb up. For those young players, you need to be able to move that thumb along the ball. Mold the ball to where you want it to go. Cat Peening now with the serve for the US squad. Peening with the jump serve. Oh, just mistimed it looked like by Pischke. Looked like she's a little too high on the serve reception there. Deceptible, uh, deep float. And this is the game point, or set point here. In the opening set, Peening with the serve, jump serve. Dig by Pischke. Set up by Humana. Pischke with the hammer down. What a recovery. Sailing it up there to Cello. Set up by Humana. Oh, just out of bounds. What a rally again there, Wes. Kim DiCello with a good read on the attack there. Ball just outside the line. Unfortunate break. Canada stays alive. We are all knotted 2020. It is up to 21, but in this stage, it is a win by two. Humano with the jump serve. DiCello with the set. Keening. Keening was long. Point for Humana and Pischke. Pischke peeling off the net there. Ball was at a good location. Ball just hit a little too strong. Canada with the set point. Humana with the serve. Leading 21-20. Jump serve. Nice deep float there. Keating. Cello with the set. Return blocked by Pischke. And they take the first set. What a first set. 22-20. Incredible block. Taylor Pischke wrapping up like it's Christmas time, putting in her phone booth, nowhere to go, no one to call. And you see, I mean, that was revenge. That was sweet revenge for Taylor Pischke earlier in the set. DiCello blocking her a number of times, coming back and blocking that Team US to take the first set 22 to 20. And hey, that could be huge for momentum going on in this final. And it's just so hard being down on that set point. Pischke and Humana down 19-20 and getting the next couple points getting the advantage back and taking the first set. See what this does for momentum. Exactly, Wes, talk to me about momentum because it seems like almost every point it can swing either way. How crucial is momentum in the sport of beach volleyball? Oh, extremely crucial. You have to be on top of your game for the whole match. You have to filter all the noise and focus in on the task at hand. The slightest error could have gone either way in that match, winning an extra point, 22-20. I guess sticking together has to be key as well because if you're in the first set and you're 
you're turning on one another, that can completely destroy the team chemistry. It's interesting. Some of the best teams in the world have our best friends on and off the court. Some of the best teams in the world hate each other on the court, but they just work well together. It just works. Speaking of chemistry, you know, I spoke to uh, Team US, of, consisting of Kim DiCello and Kat Peening, and believe it or not, you probably wouldn't know it uh, based on that first set, but this is their first tournament playing alongside one another. This is their first tournament playing alongside one another. They actually met because they played on the pro circuit against one another. And, uh, you know, I, I, apparently they enjoyed uh, the way each other plays. And, hey, they're working pretty well as a team. It goes to show that at this level you can pair up with anybody. Absolutely. The skill is just top notch. I mean, I guess in some cases, uh, Chemistry it can be developed over time, but is it sometimes is it, is it just natural or sometimes it's just natural You find that player who's you're comfortable with and, and you know what to expect you just have a feel for them It looks like they're gelling well in this first tournament together Humana with a serve Jump serve and that is long just long. I thought I maybe skimmed the line there but. Humana and Pishki actually just pairing up for the third year together. Taylor Pishki used to play with a girl named Rachel Cockrell who's taking a little bit of time off of beach circuit. Oh wow. Also an exceptional athlete. Painting with the jump serve. Humana with the set. Pishki over. Set up by DiCello. Painting and I think that's in. Yes, it's in. Team US taking a quick early 2-0 lead in the second set here in the Pro Beach Volleyball women's final. Beautiful set. transition, great read by Peening in the back row, able to translate into a point. Cat Peening, jump serve, dig Humana, Pishki with a set, Humana with a spike and that is in. Point for Humana and Pishki, they're on the board here in the second set. Also sneaking it just by the block, just on the left side of the cello. The cello needs to take a step over, make sure she can't hit that line with that pace. Taylor Pishke, jump serve, painting with the return, set up by DiCello, Pishke with the spike, and that is out of bounds, OB wide left. Point for Taylor Pishke and Humana. Painting with a good sell, she showed line, the defender ran line, she just put the ball just a couple inches out. And again, we're all nodded, tied 2-2. Two -two. Painting return. Set up by DiCello, Peening, oh, look at the power there by Kat Peening. Peening and DiCello with the point. Making up for that last miss with some thunder. I mean, how do you even return that when it's coming at, with that velocity, that speed? How do you prepare for that? At that pace, you just hope it hits you. You have to be in position. If you're not, there's almost no chance you're digging that ball. Mana, dig. Mana with a spike, over. Oh, placement. Placement, what Humana. A shot. Holding the holding Peening on the line. Peening looked like she almost rolled her ankle there. <laughs> Pishki and Humana. All knotted up at three. Humana with the serve. Jump serve. Peening return. DiCello over. DiCello with that vertical leap again. Humana and Pishki just not set on the two ball. The best teams will notice that and chuck it over on two. Sure making you sure you're keeping and paying attention. And what do you know, we're in a another tight set. <laughs> DiCello and Peening leading 4-3 in the early goings here in the second set of the Pro Beach Women's Volleyball Finals. Kat Peening with the serve, jump serve. Pishki with the return, ooh! A little miscue there. It looked like it just caught Pishki on her right hand. You want to try pass the ball on your forearms. Passing, making sure the ball contacts it evenly. It just looked like it hit the right hand and shanked off to the right side. Is that just a matter of a miss hit? Miss hit. Peening serve, Humana over, blocked again by DiCello. We can see the athleticism. DiCello just elevating into the heavens. Can dunk a tennis ball. I still want to see that. That has some hops. <laughs> yeah. Peening with the serve, Pishki with the dig. Pishki going up to the spike, floats it over. Pishki, great vision, goes line over. Beautiful touch, listening to her partner Humana on the line call. 
Line call meaning the blocker is taking the line hard driven. Your options are to go over top of the block or challenge the digger cross court. Pishki with the serve, trailing 4 6. Painting setting it up, DiCello. Oh, do you saw Pishki there anticipating the spike and DiCello with that slight little touch over the net. One of the hardest digs to make is a blocker peeling off the net and transitioning to get that short one. It's almost mind games at this point with DiCello. Showing their experience. The serve. Humana. Pishki with the set. Humana. Drills it out of bounds, though. DiCello and Peening pulling away here, leading 8 4 over eight Taylor Pishki and Melissa Humana in the second set. Humana deciding to challenge the block of the digger cross court there just a little wide. The Americans have a built a little lead here. DiCello analyzing the ball there. Cello with the serve over. Pishki with the return. Pishki going for the spike. Little tip over, return. Set up by DiCello. And a tip, and it's on the line anyways. Another point for Team US of Kim DiCello and Kat Peening. Just catching the outside right hand of Pishki lining on the line. DiCello beating up. Timeout's gonna be called by our Canadian girls. And a timeout is called. I think this is a very good time for a timeout as Team Canada consisting of Taylor Pishki and Melissa Humana trail four to nine right now. Four to nine. They want to make sure they don't give the Americans any more. They want to get back to the basics, get back to what was working in that first set. Just try to bridge the gap here. Maybe slow the momentum down. And you know, judging them by their first set, you know that they're not going to fold in the second. Peening and the cello showing all sorts of experience here today. They look calm as it can be. With all the music around here and all the noise, it's amazing that these players can hear each other out there. It's got to be tough. Hey, it's tough for us, and we're just we're just talking about the game. They're actually playing it. It's tough to hear yourself speak. Is Mike on? Kim DiCello. Looks like she has a little routine there with the spin prior to her serve. Jump serve DiCello. Pishki with the dig. Mana setting it up. Pishki tips it over. Fooled him. Point for Team Canada out of the timeout. To talk about that routine, a lot of players having a little routine just to make sure their head's in the game, make sure they're focused before they're served. Put the ball in with some pace to put the passer out of trouble. You'll notice each player has their own routine. Humana Pishki trailing to cello peening. Five to nine. Humana with the serve. Jump serve. And that is long. That is long. Are those mental errors that you want to avoid now, trailing by five? You want to avoid those, especially when you're down, when you're trying to crawl back into the set. Just doesn't help. Everything has to be perfect here. Keening, jump serve. Humana setting it up. Oh, and you just saw the power of Taylor Pishke on that one with the spike. Challenging the block and going right around her. Elevating up to the sky. Great placement on that point. Pishki with the jump serve. Peening with the return. Peening over, look at the touch there. Just, just a little tap over the net. Speaking of seeing things. With the cello setting, Peening just a little bit off that net. Forcing Taylor to peel and play some defense. Peening with a nice soft touch cross court. A paintbrush. DiCello Peening leading 11 6 in the second set over Humana and Pishki. DiCello with the serve. Humana with the set. Pishki over. Nice dig. Peening over. Tipped over. Oh, Humana fooled Team US. Showing her athleticism there, jumping up. Usually she's the digger in the back row, challenging that front row blocker there. On that two ball by Taylor. Nice deep poke into the corner. Looks like a lot of it is just anticipation, positioning, and reading your opponent. There you saw Humana. I mean, it looked like DiCello and Peening were expecting the spike. Humana instead just floats it over and uh, found the open spot. And the young guns showing their experience too. They're not strangers to this beach scene. Humana with the serve. 
training at a very high level. Cello setting it up, Keening with the hammer. Over, inbounds, point for Team US. She had such little room to hit that line and just painting it right on the sideline. Very impossible to make that transition as a defender. Kat Painting with the serve, jump serve. Madden with the set, spike. Nice dig by Peening. Peening with that, just along the net again, inbounds. Taylor bringing the heat, Peening in the right spot, just like we talked about, nice dig and that soft touch again. She likes that cross court cut. And that almost looked intentional, you know? Is that, I mean, did she intend to actually put it along the net like that? Or? The partner calling the line, she decides to challenge the digger on a sharp cross court cutty. It's just too fast. Tipped, and that's a point for Team Canada, Pishki Humana. Pishki Humana will now serve. Trail 8 to 13 as we head into our technical timeout. Five point lead for DiCello and Peening. They're trailing down one set to Team Canada, Pishki Humana. And it, it is a best of three, up to 21 for this second set. Well, you got herself a dandy final like, here. Like you said, these teams so evenly matched, you can't expect this to end in two straight sets. We know we're going to three. The first set went into the win by two format. Both teams were knotted at 21 each. Pishki and Humanita took it 23 to 21. What a great event this is. I mean, we have quality volleyball here at the center of gravity beach volleyball tournament, pro beach volleyball tournament. Uh, we even have an amateur division. We have the basketball going on. It's just a great community event and just a great gathering for the city of Kelowna. Don't forget that beer garden for the spectators. Brought to you by Wet 8 Productions. <laughs> Beer Garden sponsored right, by Bud Light. Looks like they're negotiating who's got the serve right now, or? Just checking if it's the first or second server. Okay, here we no go. No penalty in beach volleyball if you serve with the wrong player. All right, back to serve now will be Taylor Pischke. Pischke with the service. Jump serve Pischke. The cello with the dig. Cello going for the spike, tips it over. Humana with a nice dig. Humana going for the spike with the hammer down. Point for Humana and Pishki. Humana, bringing the heat, what a transition play. Jumping up, no block on the American side, hitting it right down the seam with pace. Getting ready to serve is Pishki. The team of Pishki, Humana trailing 9-13 here in the second set. Pishki Humana lead one set to nothing in this best of three Pro Beach Volleyball Women's Final. Ticello getting a wipe for the sunglasses, that's allowed. Pishki with the serve. Painting with the set. Ticello hammers down, finds the open spot, points Running to Ticello and Running a back set, they're making the defense move, hitting to the open spot, just as the defenders were getting back into position. Nice play. Ticello with the service. Standing serve there, Ticello. Nice recovery, but it is far right, out of bounds there by Pishki. Point, Ticello peening, leading 15 to nine. Nice pass from the short serve, just unable to convert there. Close to a second set. And that's into the net for Ticello. Point for Humana and Pishki. That's a free point there. Pishki and Humana build, looking to build a uh, comeback here. Humana with the serve. Jump serve to DiCello. Dig. Nice recovery by Peening. And it's in play. Look at the effort there by Team DiCello and Peening. Beautiful set by Kat Peening. DiCello not giving the greatest pass, but Peening able to put it up into a hittable position. Peening, jump serve. Set up by Humana. Pishki with the hammer, too much for Peening. Point 
Pishke and Humana. Pinning in the right spot there. Taylor just a little too heavy on the hit. Ball shanked off the court there. Pishke, jump serve. Peening, setting it up. To Cello. Didn't get all of it, but in play. Great placement there. Looks like they're trying to attack the block of Taylor. They don't want to deal with her at the net. They want to force her to peel and force her to dig the ball in transition. Something is so hard to do as a blocker. Appeared to look like almost a miss hit. I mean, she's we're used to those, you know, hammer smashes from DiCello, but looked like they weren't quite, quite ready for that one. Well, these players know exactly where they're putting the ball. Kimana setting it up. Pishki over. Points by Pishki. Returning the favor there on the line shot, just on the side of the block by DiCello. Kimana with the service. Jump serve to DiCello. Set by Peening, hammer blocked. Nice recovery. Oh, what can you say about that rally? What a recovery by DiCello. Well, Peening just using her veteran sense there, sensing that the block had just touched the ball and they weren't in position. Going over on two, Humana and Pishki almost there, just not set in time. Peening getting set to serve, leading 18-12. Anna. And there you go, rolls over the net as well. Tricky shot there by Pishki, gets the point. A little luck too, rolling off the net. But Taylor knew exactly where she was going with that. Pishki, jump serve. DiCello, dig. Set up by Peening. DiCello with the smash. And a little misread by Humana. DiCello just dominant all day with that spike. Taylor Pishke is a big block too. She stands six foot two. DiCello challenging her at the same height. So they're at a high altitude up there at the net. DiCello. Float serve. Nice short serve. Humana. With the spike, Pishke. Another point for the Canadian squad of Taylor Pishke, Melissa Mana, tra trailing 14 to 19 in this second set. It's just a beautiful set. Mana, dig by DiCello. DiCello. Now you saw DiCello there just get stuffed by Pishke, and she reached over the net, but as long as you don't touch the net, that's okay, right? Yeah, it's a new rule coming from indoor to the beach game. You're allowed to touch any part of the net as long as it's not the top white tape. The equivalent to a rejection in basketball, if you will. Yes, definitely. Peening setting it up to Cello. Spikes it, and too much for Pishki. Broken play there, but DiCello able to hit right down the middle, caused some confusion on the Canadian side. Looks like we got a uh, s switching sides. Is this a technical timeout here? Oh, it's a we also we have a set point here with uh, the Americans peening the cello up 20 to 15, looking to force that third and deciding set. Peening with the service. Jump serve by Peening. Pishki. Pishki. Peening dig. The cello over. Pishki. Humana. Pishki over. Tipped with the point. They stay alive in this second set. Pishki challenging the block there twice, getting two touches. Second time around, she's able to convert. Pishki looking to take advantage of this service here. Trailing 16 to 20 in this second set. Pishki with the jump serve. Cello handles it easily. Cello over. Too much, and they take the second set, 21-16. 21-16 was the final. We are all knotted up now. One set apiece. And pretty much as expected here, heading to the third and final set. Heading to the third as, as well as both team captains with the head ref now taking the coin toss to decide who is going to receive and what side they want to start on here. The third set. Now does this t this uh, U.S. squad, consisting of Kim DiCello and Kat Painting, 
Do you see a bit of a momentum shift now? Shift now? Do they have momentum going into the third set? I think they do, but uh, volleyball is a funny game. A lot of the times that team that wins the second set loses momentum as that team that won the first set wants to come back even harder. It seems like momentum can shift on, you know, even one point in this sport. I mean, you can get up on one point, you can get down on one point. Talk to me a bit about that because it seems if you have one good spike or one good serve, it can completely reverse the game. Exactly, we call that the ebb and flow. Just the way, just the way life goes and everything. One, one minor play could change the whole face of the game as long as it brings the ebb and flow back to your side. You know, as media types here, Wes, obviously I tried to build up this whole rivalry, rivalry having a squad from U.S. of DiCello and Peening versus a squad from Canada consisting of Taylor Pischke and Melissa Humana. You know, you try to create that rivalry, but speaking to the DiCello and uh, Peening squad from the U.S., they were just very nice people, you know? I mean, you try to get that good versus bad, good versus evil, but all they could say was great things about the tournament, about their opponents about everything pretty much here for uh, center of gravity yeah these volleyball players very very nice approachable people off the court when it's on the court in game time though different story both teams showing their passion wanting to win that cash prize getting set for the third and final decisive set for the pro beach women's volleyball final here at center of gravity the team of Kat Peening and Kim DiCello with the serve. Kat Peening with the serve. Jump serve. Pischke. Humana setting it up. Pischke tips it over with a piece by DiCello. Couldn't quite get there. Pischke and Humana. one nothing. Good start by the Canadians, especially in this third set. We only go to 15 points. Switch every five points. This match comes fast. You don't want to get in a hole. First to 15 in this third and final set, or win by two. Peening, spike. Nodded at one. Couldn't quite get there, Humana. Well, that's the first serve that Cat Peening's seen all game. Pishki and Humana deciding to go against uh, challenge. Kim there on the end line, ready to serve. Cat Peening showing why they don't want to serve her. Cello, peening over, Humana, nice return. Pischke setting it up. Humana, too much power for DiCello, knocking her visor off. Humana and Pischke taking a 2-1 lead. That is called a six-pack in volleyball, taking it off the noggin. Also a play that can really change the momentum here. Pischke, jump serve. Peening with the return. At the net, ooh, missed hit by DiCello. Canada with a 3-1 lead early on in this third and final set. Also a missed cue on the pass there by Cap Heening. It's unable to caress the ball. Fishkey with the service. Jump serve. Heening. DiCello over with a nice touch. Nice dive by Humana. Humana spiking it. DiCello. Great rally going on. Pischke over, spike, blocked by DiCello. Pischke deciding to swing on that block. DiCello says no. Point for the Americans, and there's that fast side switch at five points. What a rally there. And what do you think is being discussed here? You see Humana speaking with the official. Well, you saw in that last play, Kat Peening making a dig overhead. I think the Canadians are lobbying for a carried ball, claiming that that ball did not come off in one rebound. The ball stuck into her hands. That's what we call a carry here. DiCello with her routine. Routine. Serving it up. Pischke. Humana setting it up. Pischke. Nice touch. Just in the right side. Pischke. 4 2. The Americans holding their defensive position there, showing cross the whole way. With the defender moving to the line at the last second, Pischke seeing that and going the opposite way, maintaining that two-point spread. DiCello. DiCello. Oh, couldn't quite get there for Humana. Good effort. Point for DiCello and Peening. 
painting so smart, just poking the ball off the block, making it hard for Melissa to track it down. Remember folks, this is the finals, which means, which means there is a cash prize on the line. First place with 3,000, second, 1,500, third, and fourth, getting 500 apiece. Pishke over the net, fools it. DiCello. Pishke using the line on the last few transitions, now going to the cut shot. Americans thinking she's gonna go to her bread and butter, but she's got all the shots in the book. Taylor Pishke with the service. Pishke jump serve, Keening with the dig. Set up by DiCello, Pishke hammers it in. Just in bounds with the point for Peening and DiCello. Peening with the perfect shot, seeing the blocker Taylor Peel hitting it right down the middle of the court. Cello with the jump serve. Peening, Humana setting it up. Pishke over, just going back to that line, line shot. Yeah. So deceptive. I mean, for the people at home, kind of give them an understanding of how hard it is to hug that line off a spike or a volley. Well, when that ball's coming with pace, you just have to be in the right position. You always have to respect that that hitter can hit every other soft shot. So it's just hard to defend that whole back court. You really have to trust your partner. The cello tipping it over. Nice dig. Humana all over the court here, another dig. Going over, stuffed by DiCello. Point DiCello peening. Humana showing just how fast she is on defense, just like a sand bug. Peening, serving for DiCello peening. Trailing 5-6 in the third and final set here in the Women's Beach Volleyball Finals. Painting serve. Mana. Mana with the service. Oh, just nails the back line there. Humana Pishki with the point. Well, the high riser, she put a bit of extra spin so the ball would dip at the last second, catching the line, making it move, making it easy for the refs to call in. Pishki with the service here. Pishki serving to Cello with the dig. Painting, stuffed, couldn't quite get there for Humana. Kim DiCello showing her strength, two joust wins in a row. The Americans trailing 6-7 in the third and final set here. DiCello with the serve. Humana over, what a smart play there by Humana. Good play to run, especially when that blocker is serving, having to run up to the net to block, catching it on two, just not giving them time to react. Man, a jump serve. DiCello setting it up for Peening. Peening with a spike with the hammer down. Is that a hubby wife there, Wes? Hubby wife, but uh, Peening and DiCello able to talk it over, make the hit down the middle. Hubby wife especially for uh, Taylor and Melissa there. For those just tuning in, Wes uh, explained to me what the term hubby wife means here in beach volleyball. It's when a spike comes at you and the defense kind of looks at one another thinking, hey, you got it, you got it? Is, it? is that pretty much what it is? Yeah, it's that miscommunication we so often have. Ooh, you take short. it, no, you take it. Peening, just gotta lap that one off, miss hit. One of those unforced errors that you would try to avoid here in the final. Especially as they're trying to climb back. 9-7 for the Canadians. This set could be tied at 8-8. Eight, eight. Hishke with the service, leading 9-7. Peening with the dig. DiCello, Peening blocked by Hishke. <laughs> Hishke with the hammer, what a dig. Still going here, Humana. Humana with the spike, hammers it down. What a point by Pishke and Humana. Well, the crowd definitely appreciating that rally. The Canadians coming on top. Melissa just showing her athleticism in the back row, coming up with the heat at the end. Point Canada. Both sides displaying that never give up mentality there.
Wow. We're at that point of the set. One play could change the whole face of the game. I think this is a smart timeout here for US. I mean, after that, we talked about momentum. I mean, that's a huge momentum swing for Team Canada, Fishkin, Humana. Uh, the crowd's into it now. They probably have a bit of hometown, uh, a, a bit of hometown help here, if you will. I think that's a great call there. The timeout by DiCello and Peening. As well, the Americans want to stop the flow that, that Melissa Humana and Taylor Pischke have built. Want to give them something to think about on the serve here. So Wes, what do you think is being discussed now uh, on the Team US side? I mean, Team Canada has a 10-7 lead in the decisive third round, or third set, excuse me. What's being discussed? Well, they want to slow the pace of the game down. They just want to talk about talking, like I said earlier. They want to make sure they're communicating, taking it one point at a time, trying to bridge the gap, close this three-point gap, and anything can happen after that. It was advertised as a pretty even final, no clear-cut favorite, and it is delivering. We it have experience on the American side versus youth on the Canadian side. I love it. Nothing more exciting. DiCello setting it up for Peening. Peening over, trying to place it. Humana reads it well. Spike over, and another placement by Humana with the points. We talk about how hard, is it, how hard it is as a blocker to peel and dig. It's extremely hard as well as a digger to chase that short shot ball, get in the position to score. How much of it on the defensive side is it about anticipating? How, ma how much is it anticipation in this sport? Anticipation is a huge factor, but you also have to respect that the other player can do anything. Uh, they've got such high skill, like that shot there by DiCello. You really have to be in position and just react. Speaking of placement, DiCello with a beautiful, nice little soft touch over the net. Reading it well. DiCello serving now. Trailing Team Canada, 8-11. Pishke and just in bounds, placing it perfectly just in the right line. Now the Canadians just three points away from the gold medal, $3,000 prize, center of gravity, here we are. Melissa Humana, jump serve, painting, painting with the hammer down. Showing that this set isn't over. Melissa and Taylor are gonna have to earn it. Saw a little no bit of point. swagger on that spike. A little bit of a the hairy eyeball across the net with the stare down. Cat Peening with the jump serve. Dig Pishke. Pishke over. Placement, beautiful placement. Pishke spotting that open corner. Bridging it now, two points away from the win. You can see the focus in the eyes of Taylor Pischke. Just two points away, championship. Jump serve. Just out of bounds. Good call by DiCello and Peening not to return that one. That looked like it had a chance. DiCello. With the jump serve, nice placement. Humana setting it up. Pishke with the power. The Canadians deciding to go on two again. It's a play that's worked for them this whole match. One point away from the, from the money here. Here it is, you can hear the crowd getting up for this one. Match point for Team Canada. Humana, jump serve. DiCello. And there it is! The team consisting of Taylor Pishkin and Melissa Humana take it in the third set, 15 to 10 over Kim DiCello and Kat Feening. What a serve there, just putting all types of pressure on the pass. Kim DiCello unable to handle that heat. Peening unable to bring it back. And this final lived up to the expectation. I'm gonna get on the 
court here and try and talk to the winning team of Taylor Pischke and Melissa Humana. I'm walking towards them. I'm going to bring them over here. Melissa Taylor, can I talk to you for Shaw TV right over here? Perfect. Congratulations. Great win, yeah. Oh, that delivered. That was entertaining. <laughs> oh, that was amazing. Oh, just right over here. Just right over here. We good to go? All right, Melissa Taylor, talk to me about that win. It's got to be feeling pretty good right now. Feels really good. Um, it was a great game. They're an awesome team. Um, obviously, it was good for the crowd and everything for it to go to three. I think it was an exciting match, and it feels really good to win that one. Yeah, uh, last year we were in the finals as well, and unfortunately we lost, and it was in three again. So it was looking like it was going to be a like a similar match, but we pulled out through at the end, and I think we played really strong. We came out when we needed to, and I think it was one of our better games. Amazing. And talk to me about momentum and adversity, because in the first, you got that decisive first set. That pretty much looked like it could have gone either way, you know, winning by uh, the tiebreaker, winning by two. Yeah. The second set, they come storming back, taking that one. How did you overcome the adversity to take the third and final set? Um, we just, basically, we focused on our side and our siding out, and we knew that the momentum would come back in our favor at some point. Um, obviously, that first set win was crucial, because we wouldn't have won if we didn't win that set. So. That was really good for us to pull back in that one. But Yeah, I think after the second set, when we were in our timeout, we had to really talk to each other and communicate a lot, and we kind of had to put everything in the past, and we had to start the third set like it was just the first set. Like, like it was a new game, and forget about everything, and just we had a new game plan. We came out stronger, and I think it worked. How long have you two been playing together for? This is our second summer, so like a year and a half. You seem to have that natural chemistry going on. I mean, is a little bit of ESP going on there? Or? Yeah, no, uh, since the first tournament that we've ever played together, we've just really connected on the court, and we we really, like, complement each other and things that I have strengthened. Taylor has strengthened other things, and we really, like, in that way, in our game, we, like, it's probably one of the better teams that complement each other in that way. Yeah, for sure. Well, it helps a lot when I'm blocking to know that Melissa's always there, like, to turn around and she'll be there every time, so that helps. It's great. Time to celebrate? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> what are you going to do for the celebration? Probably go to the Cog House tonight, maybe have a couple beers, get some donuts. Yeah, that sounds good. Well deserved, well deserved. And up next, congratulations again. Up next, we've got the men's final after the break. I'm here with Scott Emsley, the organizer of this event. First off, what a final in that yeah. women's final. 
Yeah, it was amazing. I, uh, I didn't get a chance to watch all of it, but the points I saw were really good. I actually uh, have a bit of a beach volleyball background myself, so it's always fun popping into this zone, and I, I know a lot of the athletes. And These uh, girls have been coming the last couple of years, so it's good to see them win. I think last year they finished second. But yeah, really exciting final. Talk to me about the event in general. I mean, the spirit of it. Everyone just seems to be so up and just yeah. so into it. Yeah. Well, yeah, this weekend uh, we've actually been pretty lucky with weather because going into the weekend it looked pretty scary. But, uh, yeah, the sun's opened up and we've got uh, great weather. I think people are pumped about that. But just overall, there's so much going on in Centre of Gravity. I think we have a lot of people coming in from out of town that uh, you know, don't really know what's in store. And they get here and it's, just, you know, it's Cologne, it's on the beaches. There's eight different sports and then a lot of great music. So it's, it's a lot to take in. And uh, I found this year... Uh, in particular, the crowds have been really well behaved and just really positive overall uh, attitude, I guess. And a ton of visitors from outside Kelowna that I've learned. Actually. Yeah, yeah, tons from Alberta. We have over 20% of our tickets sold to people from Alberta. The lower mainland, there's a lot coming from there, you know, even Vancouver Island. Uh, this is the first year I, I uh, noticed a lot of tickets, not a ton of tickets, but tickets being sold in Toronto. So the word spread across Canada, and it's, uh, yeah, it's great for the tourism, it's great for the economic impact. As a volleyball yeah. nearly hits my head. <laughs> yeah. So. so talk to me about, uh, I mean, are, you're sitting courtside, I imagine, for this beach volleyball final between the men's. Yeah, it's uh, a couple of my really good buddies here. Uh, the guy in the red shirt behind me is Binstock, who, Josh Binstock, who played in the Olympics. So it's pretty cool to have an Olympian here. Uh, the team they're playing against is a bunch of up-and-comers, uh, young guys. But, uh, yeah, I I don't get to play much anymore because my summers have been taken up by organizing festivals. Uh, but I have had the chance to play against these young guys, and I don't want to play against them too much more because uh, they make me feel old. They're, uh, they're really dynamic, and they're fun to watch. Well, you're a busy guy. You're organizing this whole thing. Thanks for stopping by and uh, talking with us. you got to go grab a seat, and we got to get ready for the men's final coming up next. Coming to you live from Center Court at Hot Sands Beach in Kelowna, BC, it's high-flying volleyball action at its best as Shaw TV presents the 2013 Center of Gravity Men's Beach Volleyball Finals. Welcome back. We're moments away from the Men's Volleyball Final. Now, Wes, the men's final has a lot to live up to. That women's final was amazing as the ball almost hits my head. Talk to me a little bit about the teams that are going on here. Well, we have Josh Binstock, an Olympian from the London 28-2008 games. He played with Martin Reeder. 
He's paired up with Sam Schachter today, one of the young guys coming through the Canadian system. They're a very competitive team. They're facing off against Ben Chow and Dan Caverly, Vancouver home favorites. So the Vancouver home favorites I heard are a bit younger, so it's a little bit of youth versus experience. You know, Dan's only 21 years old, Ben Chow 20 years old, but they've got every trick in the book. These guys are extremely competitive, they're explosive, they're dynamic, they're going to give these Olympians a run for their money here. It's going to be a dandy. We're going to make our way to center court and get set up as these guys get ready for the opening serve. University. Their team won the provincial title this year. He was the reigning MVP. Ben Chow hailing out of University of British Columbia. Both very, very talented players. Have you played with or against any of these players before? I played with Dan Caverly in my fifth year. He was in his first year. He was, uh, he was up and coming, and he is one of the best beach volleyball players BC has to offer today. Ben Chow also very, very explosive. This guy can elevate. He's got some hops on him. Look for him to get some big blocks. Getting set to go here for the Pro Beach Volleyball Men's Final. Josh Binstock and Sam Shackler from Ontario taking on Dan Caverly and Ben Chow. Both from British Columbia? Both from British Columbia. Ben Chow hailing out of Surrey. Dan Caverly coming out of Coquitlam, BC. Schachter with the serve. Chow setting it up. Oh, Chow with the hammer. And you just saw a display of power. Ben Chow bringing the heat, setting the tone for this opening set. Dan Caverly with the jump serve. Binstock. Binstock just inbounds. And you saw the placement there. That's all skill there by Josh Binstock. Just perfect placement right into the back corner. One all in the early goings in the first set. Binstock serving to Caverly. Caverly over. Schachter places Schachter it perfectly. It's 
Sam Schachter and Josh Binstock looking to split block here. Sam's usually the defender with Binstock at the net blocking, bringing out all the tools against these young guys. Caverly, Schachter over. Chow couldn't quite get there. Point for Binstock and Schachter. And seeing the exact same play unfold in front of her eyes, that point of the point before exactly the same. Binstock with the jump serve. Caverly. Caverly places it. Binstock returns. Binstock going for the hammer. He delivers. Oh. Oh, it looked like he may have hit the net there, but he didn't. Binstock and Schachter with the point, leading 4-1 in the early goings of this first set. Head ref Alex Pappas calling Dan Caverly on the net, touching that white part that you're not allowed to touch. Binstock serving. Caverly, Caverly going for the hammer. Binstock returns easily. Binstock going for a nice touch again. Left hand. Binstock with a lefty. Loops it up and over down the line. It's five one. Binstock is living up to expectations as an Olympian. He represented Team Canada in the 2012 Summer Olympics. Binstock with the serve. Caverly, Chow over, and it's long. Another point for Binstock Chow and Schachter. No good. Chow trying to bail out Caverly on the two ball there, just a little too strong. Trying to give this team of Sam Schachter and Josh Binstock a different look. Unfortunately down 1-6. Sam Schachter also with plenty national team experience. He was a world champion in the 2001 World Juniors. Chow and Caverly with a much needed point there. Trailing two, serving six. The early goings of the first set. They definitely do not want to get into a big hole here early. Chow, jump serve, nice serve. Binstock returns. Binstock going for the hammer. <laughs> Binstock. Cross court. Binstock is so high in the air there. There's no way that Caverly and Chow are touching that ball. Looked like it was sailing out. Perfectly placed shot. You look at Binstock with his laissez faire attitude. He's just having fun out there. Schachter with the jump serve. Caverly going for the hammer. Binstock with a piece. Binstock's got to go over. Double hit. That's all right. Chow hits the net. Another point for Schachter and Binstock leading 8 2. Caverly and Chow going to a lot of roll shots here. They need to stay aggressive like that first point. They're just giving it right here. Giving it up to the uh, Olympian Josh Binstock and his partner a little too easy. Schachter. The jump serve. Chow setting it up for Caverly. Caverly just rejected there by Binstock. Caverly going over. Binstock with a piece, setting it up. And he delivers again. Schachter. Schachter with the power. A lot of impressive net play there. Looked like both blockers jumped at least four times. You see Schachter, a little bit different personality than Binstock. Schachter seems more intense, more, I'm not going to say focused because it's, Binstock clearly is focused, but he seems like a much more intense personality where Binstock is a little more laid back, kind of enjoying his time. Still delivering, but their personalities seem to complement each other quite Sam, well. Sam Schachter, known as a firecracker, he's toned down a little bit in the last few years, but you can see the fire he brings to the game. Absolutely just loves winning. Josh Binstock hailing from Richmond Hill, Ontario. Interesting fact, actually, about Sam Shackler and Josh Binstock, both from Richmond Hill, Ontario lived two blocks away from each other, and this is their first time playing with one another, despite growing up two blocks away from one another. I guess they grow volleyball talent in Richmond Hill, Ontario. Must be something they're feeding them over there. These two guys are big. Something in the water. They're athletic, they're fast, they're mobile. Schachter Binstock leading 9 2 in the first set here. Schachter with the serve. Chow setting it up. Caverly going with the power. 
dig by Schachter. Schachter, power, and it's gonna hit us. Nope, just sailing over our heads there, out of bounds. Never giving up though is Chow. There's the Shack attack again. You hear his nickname, Shack attack, right there. Sam Schachter gets a dig on a ball. Caverly going with the heat there. Sam Schachter making the dig and transitioning for the point. Schachter, jump serve. Caverly, Chow. Caverly tipping it over. Binstock with a piece. Nice dig. Chow setting it up. Caverly. Perfect placement. And they needed that one, Wes. Caverly going through his bread and butter, the jumbo. We call that high cross for roll shot a jumbo shrimp. Fooling Sam, showing that he was going to go line and changing the wrist at the last second. Schachter and Binstock having a bit of a laugh. <laughs> the announcer here has been doing a great job. The on-site announcer, that is. Schachter with the dig. Binstock setting it up. Oh, look at the power there by Schachter. And you just see the look in his eyes. He, firecracker is the correct term to define this guy. He's got that stare down, that smirk stare Eye down. of the tiger. Caverly well, almost getting that dig. He's one of the best defenders out here. People amazed at how easy he makes things look. Binstock jump, serve. Ooh, and he's short. Lucky break for Caverly Chow. Now you see a lot of these serves, uh, sometimes they go for placement, and uh, that time he went for placement, sometimes they go for power. That short serve trying to take out that attacker, forcing him to move up, pass the ball, and get back into an attacking position. So if it's slightly over the net, if it's short, it catches the defenders off guard, is that catches it? catches them off guard, it's, it's meant to take them out of their approach maybe force them to hit the ball with a cut shot instead of the heat. Schachter with the jump serve. Chow, dig. Chow going for the spike. Finstock with a piece. Hat comes off. Finstock over, and despite his hat coming off, still manages to get the point. Finstock Schachter leading 13-4. Touching the ball on the block, juggling the hat, throwing it to the side, and then making the kill. Schachter, Binstock leading 13-4 in the early goings here. The first set of the men's volleyball final. Chow going for the hammer. Nope, Binstock did not get a piece. Out of bounds, point. Binstock, Schachter. From our vantage point, it sounded like there was a touch off the block. Binstock signaling no, the ref not calling the touch. No argument from Chow or Caverly. Chow, dig. Chow going for the spike. Blocked by... Oh, another block by Binstock. <laughs> Josh Bin blocked. I like it. Over the block, there it is. Chow gets it through. Placement and power. Showing that he's not going down without a fight. Caverly with an unbelievable set. Chow putting the ball away. Trailing 5 to 15. Chow with the serve. Binstock with the dig. Binstock going for the hammer. Places it perfectly in bounds again. Josh Binstock. What can you do if you're Chow and Caverly there? You just have to play your game and hope that. Uh, the ebb and flow will go back to your side and you get some lucky breaks. Again, I'm saying it again. I spoke to Josh Binstock before. I asked, I mean, are you a power player? Are you, is it your touch? He says, well, I'm just known for uh, just kind of the strategy. I know, I know, you know, I'm known for strategy. And <laughs> so far he's delivering on that. He's doing a little bit of everything. 16-5 lead for Binstock and Schachter. You can tell they're thinking out there. They're talking about their game plan, their strategy. They're executing to a T. Up 11 points here in the first. Now at the other end of the spectrum we have Caverly right. and Chow who got off to a great start with the smash from Chow. Now they find themselves in a bit of a hole trailing 5 to 16 in the first set. What do they need to do to get back in it? Well they need to they need to bring the heat. They just can't give give easy points to Binstock and Schachter. It looks like they're a little timid. They might be they might be scared by the fact that Binstock's an Olympian and that uh, Schachter and Binstock are one of the teams to beat in Canada now. Maybe a little bit of the youth coming out. 
and we say Binstock and Schachter are the veteran squad, but uh, veteran could be a misleading term. I mean, <laughs> Binstock is 32 years old, which does not make, it makes, him, it makes him a veteran in the beach volleyball game, definitely not old in regular standards, and Schachter just 23 years of age. Schachter jumps right, there. Folks, the, the young veteran, Chow. Ah, uh, just out of bounds. Oh, no. Hug the line. Oh, it tipped off Binstock. Chow and Caverly get the point. Nice response out of the timeout. Smart shot from Ben Chow going high off the hands. They're not going to get much going down against the big block of Bin Block. Ben Chow, service. Binstock setting it up for Schachter. Schachter places it. Nice dig. Oh, nice dig by Schachter. Back and forth here. Oh, and what a relentless effort. Both sides, Schachter with the amazing little spike over. Caverly with an amazing one-arm dig. Schachter returning the favor. Just able to transition and score over top of the block of Caverly, who was late to the net. What volleyball action we have. You see Schachter's chest now just covered in sand after that dig. And a little puff too, chest puff. Pinstock. Caverly Chow with the hammer blocked by Schachter. The Shack attack does it again. Ben Chow running a bit of a fake to the back and then running back Another to the front side of Dan, unable to fool the big block of Schachter. And he's a defender. Binstock jumps serve, places it. Chow setting it up, or Chow with the hammer. Oh, Binstock couldn't quite get there. Nice placement by Chow. Ben Chow. Binstock losing his sunglasses there. He already lost his hat. Probably gonna throw those away. Yeah, he's gonna need a wipe down here. You see, so Sorry. You see some players, uh, they go with the hat and sunglasses. You see play some players go with nah, nothing at all. I mean, is it a preference? Uh, what, what, is there any benefit? Well, some players need the hat to, to hold that sweat from their hair coming down into their eyes. Other players, they don't need the sunglasses. Caverly choosing not to go with the sunglasses. Chow, the hat and sunglasses. And style points. Style points. <laughs> you don't fight the sun and you look good. Okay, there you go. Chow, jump serve. Binstock returns easily. Binstock going for the spike. Nails it. No chance for, Ch for uh, Caverly on that Josh one. Binstock. Chow is not a small blocker, too. He was up there. Binstock just the way too high. Now that net is eight feet and these guys' chests are above the net. You can imagine just how high in the air they are. Setting it up for Chow. Chow with a hammer. No chance for Schachter on that one. Even Schachter applauding Chow for that one. Giving a hand on his back. Ben Chow delivering. Somebody check that ball for a warp. I mean, to give, to give the people at home an idea of how fast those spikes are going, I mean, uh, how, uh, what's it like? What's it like to return one of those? Well, if you blink, you may not see it. Blocked by Binstock. Binstock recovers. Schachter hits the net. Point for Chow. And Caverly gaining a little momentum here. I've seen Caverly win those jousts over and over again. For a small guy, he is smart. Got to love the sportsmanship here, too. I mean, we got the finals. We got a lot of money on the line. You still see them shaking hands as they, as they exchange sides. Well, Caverly and Chow are the Team Canada Games team. They're going to come up and potentially play national team one day. Schachter and Binstock also showing the love, showing lots of support for these future, uh, future Canadian athletes. Oh, what a dig. Good effort, but just slightly too much there. Binstock, Schachter. We got set point here, leading 20 to 9. Crowd's getting into it. Calling for a sky ball here at Center of Gravity. If you're up by at least There's four, the sky there ball. it is. Way up. Down. There's the point. There's the set. Binstock and Schachter. Okay, you got to talk to me, Wes. Uh, What's the strategy in that? Why did, why did he just do that uh, sky ball? That's what it's called, sky ball, sir. Sky ball. You hit the ball as hard as you can up into the heavens. It takes uh, the depth perception away from the reception, receivers, and it just makes it a hard ball to pass because it's coming straight down with velocity. That last one landing at least four feet outside the court, but Dan electing to play it. 
Now, how come they don't bring in the sky ball for regular service? Some guys elect just to go to with a conservative serve where they can place the ball. Sky ball is more of a, a fun, tricky serve that uh, you really have no control over. If there's any Saved by the Bell fans at home, I remember the sky ball from the famous beach episode uh, when they were all at, randomly at the beach house for the summer. Remember the Saved by the Bell where Zach Morris hits it up super high? Oh, well, if you didn't see it, it's Classic West. you got to check it out. I'll buy the DVD set. <laughs> Oh, you can borrow it. I own it. Season two? I think so. I think season three. Well, the crowd loves that sky ball, maybe in Zach Moore's fashion here. Different type of ball, but same, the same amount of entertainment. Now the team of Chow and Caverly got to look to regroup here. Lost the first set 21-9. to Got to have a short memory. Binstock with the return. Binstock going for the smash. Right off the chest of Caverly. Point, Binstock Schachter. Caverly just a little bit late to that line. Ball catching him high and shanking off his chest out of bounds. Is there any strategy shift that needs to be done with the Caverly Chow team? Not really. They're just getting outplayed right now. They just make, make sure they're not getting outworked. That's long. They'll take every break, every break they can get here. Such as that one there. Chow Caverly all knotted up in the early goings of the second set here, trailing one set, nothing. Chow with the service. Chow jump serve. Schachter to Binstock. And there it is. You see that chemistry again. It's almost poetry in motion for the squad of Binstock Schachter. Schachter on such an acute angle, putting that ball straight down, hitting a nice divot giving the crowd something to ooh about. You're not getting on the courts. Binstock with the service. Jump serve, returned by Caverly. Caverly going up, hammering it. Binstock, dig. Binstock with the hammer. Nice dig. Binstock setting it up for Schachter. Schachter, again, placement, placement, placement. Ben Chow lobbying for maybe a carried ball off a of Binstock. He's not going to get it. Binstock, jump serve. Caverly, Chow setting it up. Caverly, hammer down. Did they get a piece? Point. Caverly, Chow. That's exactly what Caverly and Chow need to do here. They need to bring the heat. Not give up any easy points. And it's plays like that that could swing the momentum in the favor of Caverly Chow. Binstock with the dig. Binstock going up top. And again. Just too good there. Just showing his national elite level there, Josh Binstock. Caverly known as probably the smoothest and best digger on the beach, having trouble, all sorts of trouble with Binstock shots. Just so precise. Schachter floating it up, jump serve. Chow. Chow with the touch over, Schachter. Schachter with the hammer. Another point, Schachter and Binstock. It's much of the same here in the second set. Binstock and Schachter taking a early 5-2 lead here in the second set. They already lead one set to nothing. If they win this one, they win the Pro Beach Volleyball Finals here at Center of Gravity. Exact replica of the first set. Haverly and Chow need to come out here. Schachter jump serve. Great serve. Nice return. Getting it over. Caverly. Read perfectly by Binstock. Binstock jump serve. Nice block by Chow. Schachter over. Caverly. What a rally. Caverly over, ah, oh, just a miss hit there. Great rally by both sides. Caverly is getting in the gear here. He picked up two unbelievable shots, just unable to convert. Ball Sch shot a little too short. Schachter getting up slowly there. Seems to be all right. You see the effort is there based on his new sand shirt there. Chest and back completely, and arms completely covered in sand. Some people have a six pack, some people have a sand pack. He has both. <laughs> he does have both. Jump serve. Oh, another great serve. 
Chow up top. Rejected, gets a piece. Schachter, another great dig. Chow over, blocked by. And couldn't quite get there. Finstock, or should I say, Josh Binblock doing the Matumbo finger wag. Wow. Just and Dan wow. Gaverly all over that back court. Just unlucky. No lack of effort there with Chow and Caverly in this match thus far. Sometimes you just gotta give, uh, tip your hat, if you will, to Binstock and Schachter. Schachter, jump serve, hits the net. That's a point for Chow and Caverly. Maybe a little tired from that last rally. You see now, Binstock, Schachter discussing strategy. Chow with the service, three serving seven. Chow, jump serve, hammers it, but it's long. You saw a lot of power on that one. Chow, Chow trying to put in a uh, heavy serve there, take uh, Binstock and Schachter out of system. Binstock, jump serve, all touch. Chow trying to fool him into the net. Trying to be a little too tricky there. Trying to bail his partner Dan out, just unlucky, off the top of the tape. Looks like it's getting to the point, and you even see the hand signals there with Schachter. The blockers letting the defenders know what part of the court they're taking, whether they're taking the line, the cross court, or the seam. A lot of communication that's gone outspoken. Binstock Schachter leading 10-3, already up one set, nothing here over Chow and Caverly. They win this one, they win the championship. We can see Schachter giving the line line call, meaning he's blocking line on both sides. Binstock taking the cross court. Hammer, Schachter, block. Another point for Schachter and Binstock. Schachter doing exactly what he said, sealed the line, big block. Josh Binstock grew up, an elite hockey player, AAA, all his minor league life, also a baseball player. Schachter again with the block. Schachter usually playing as a defender, but he used to block back in the day. Well, back in the day, I mean two years ago when he was just 21, transitioning to be a digger now on the Canadian, on the Canadian circuit. Binstock plays perfectly. Chow setting it up. Caverly over. Binstock going for the hammer. And just too much. Just right over top of the block there. Nothing Ben Chow could do. Binstock's got about five inches on him in height. Maybe even more in reach. The combination of placement and power for this Binstock Schachter team appears to be too much right now for Chow and Caverly. And we can see the strategy that we talked about earlier that Binstock is employing. Crowd getting behind the BC duo of Chow and Caverly. Chow with the jump serve, power there. Binstock. Binstock with the hammer. No nope, placement. Couldn't quite get there for Caverly. Another point, Binstock Schachter. Like a surgeon, just so precise. Caverly and Chow just don't know where he's going to put the ball. Schachter Binstock leading 14-4 here in the second set. Seven points away from the, uh, the gold money here. Schachter, Chow setting it up for Caverly. Caverly over, Binstock tried for the block. Couldn't quite get there. If you can't go over him, go under him. Caverly placement serve. Binstock, Binstock going for the hammer. And again, just too much power, too much accuracy. Caverly couldn't quite get there. They lead 15-5. 
We're just showing what a different level Binstock and Schachter are on here. Caverly and Chow are one of the top teams in BC, but down 10 points here, 15-5. Just goes to show you the quality, the talent involved in this tournament, Wes. I mean, we got guys from BC, Alberta, Ontario, and it's really the best of the best, isn't it? Best of the best, Team Canada's getting they're getting good on the world stage. They're making a mark. Teams like Sam Schachter, Joss Binstock, and the women that just played, Melissa Humana and Taylor Pischke. Now, is the sport, we have as, as we uh, head to a technical timeout here, is the sport of beach volleyball, is it growing in Canada? Have you, have you seen? Growing at, a, at every level, youth level, all the way to the adult levels. You can stroll down to Kitsilano Beach in Vancouver, and everybody has a coach. Amateur players looking to turn pro. Pro players looking to go into the center of excellence down in uh, the full-time training center in Ontario. Young guys moving from BC into Ontario, trying to make their mark and get on the national team, pushing everybody to get better. And just for the casual player as well, it seems like, you know, the ideal exercise, you're constantly moving. Quick feet, I guess. <laughs> on the flip side there too, you're in the sun all day playing some beach volleyball with your friends. Can't beat this. Josh Binstock and Sam Schachter leading 16-5 here in the second set. Binstock with the serve. Binstock. Caverly setting it up for Chow. Blocked by Schachter. Got to get it over here. Does, but set up perfectly for it. Oh, just too much Binstock there. Desperation time now for Chow and Caverly trailing 17-5 here in the second set. Binstock just four points away. Caverly and Chow need to get their gearings here. Chow with the hammer. Oh, and you saw, you saw the aggression there. And that's exactly what they need to get back in this game. He's not going away easily. You see the determination in his eyes there. Electing to take the sunglasses off now. Ben Chow with the jump serve. Schachter, set up by Binstock. Schachter with the hammer. Just so much power. Caverly, what a recovery by Caverly Chow. The crowd's into it. Schachter going with a faster set. Caverly Chow getting a hand on it. A beautiful set from Chow and Dan with the one foot takeoff. We talked about momentum in this game, how crucial it is. And I mean, it's points like that that can totally swing the momentum to the other side, to the team of Chow and Caverly. Chow, jump serve, look at the hammer, look at the power. Binstock setting it up for Schachter. Schachter hitting the ball out, but Chow calling himself on the net. Unlucky break. Went out of bounds, but it looked like Chow got a piece of it, which means another point for Binstock and Schachter. Three points away from a championship. Second set leading 18-7. Schachter serving. Schachter, Caverly. Chow setting it up for Caverly. Caverly placing it. Easy return. Schachter going for the hammer. Oh, just hugs the line, inbounds. And you said it like a surgeon. And Binstock with a little swagger there backing up with the hand motion that that ball is in. Here we go, Schachter with the serve. Chow setting it up. Caverly hammers. Schachter's been all over the returns. Oh, paints the line. Paints the line once again. Once again, right over top of Ben Chow. Ben Chow taking that line. Schachter just going two straight down. Crowd's getting into it. We're gonna see a sky ball here. Sky ball time. Way up, oh. Hits the leaves above us. What happens there? It looks like. Is that a reshot or is that going to be out of bounds? That's a point for Caverly Chow. The, the leaves of the tree and the branches considered out of bounds. Schachter unlucky there. He had the leaves kind of come over about half the court. Schachter just hitting into the wrong parts of the uh, top of the fridge. Chow Caverly. 
trailing 8 to 20 here. Still match point. Schachter to Binstock. For the Schachter win. hammering it. And he delivers, and that's it. Binstock Schachter taking the men's volleyball final here at Center of Gravity. Just too much, taking it two sets to none. And a flip side from the women's match there, the Young Guns winning that one. This one, the experienced Olympian and his partner coming on top. And just what an amazing display of athleticism and elite beach volleyball. This is legitimate pro beach, pro, pro beach volleyball here. And you know, look at the spirit of the guys. I love it, everyone shaking hands. Just a great, uh, great community here for the uh, volleyball tournament at Center of Gravity. Well, they're getting ready now for the photos. Josh Binstock. And I mean, <laughs> the laissez-faire attitude of Binstock, you really wouldn't know that he just won the Pro Beach Volleyball Championship. He's just loving being out here. You can see the swagger even in the walk. But you know what, great effort from uh, Caverly and Chow. Just, I mean, hats off. Hats off to the elite national level players from uh, <laughs> Binstock and Schachter. Shack Attack and Bin Block display just, uh, you know, that they are true elite national level players. Again, Binstock, a uh, Olympian in 2012 for Team Canada. But hey, these guys, this Caverly and Chow squad, they're up and coming. Talk to me. I mean, they're they're up and coming in the BC volleyball scene. Even in lieu of the score that we saw here, a lot of respect going both ways. Kaverly and Chow, they're they're going to be the team to watch out for in the next four or five years. So Binstock and Schachter, they take home the grand prize, three thousand dollars. Not too bad. Nice little payday for the Pro Beach Volleyball Championships here at Center of Gravity. I'm going to try and get a word with the winning squad. I'm gonna make my way over there. Just getting their bearings, a little bit of celebration. It's all smiles as you can see with Binstock and Schachter. Come on over, guys. Come on over. Right. Hey, congratulations. Oh, that was great. That was great. Congratulations. Thanks. Elite level volleyball here with the championship duo. Now, guys, uh, talk me through the match. I mean, it seemed like you had momentum from the start. Yeah, I mean, we knew they were a good team. They're young, but we were not going to take them lightly. Uh, we've watched them a little bit and had a scouting report, so we had a game plan and executed it. What was the game plan? Uh, block well, dig well. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah. Just, you know. Well, we knew, I mean, uh, we went, it's a volleyball, you go at one guy, and we kind of saw what his favorite shots were all tournament, so we were going to take that away from him, and then if he adjusted, we'd have to readjust, but he never really adjusted, and, uh, you know, that's part of the beach game. It's like kind of like chess, you know? Now, I, I heard a rumor that you guys actually grew up in the same city. <laughs> yeah, we actually are both from Richmond Hill, about five minutes from each other. So is the different generations, though, he's about nine years younger than me, so <laughs> that's why we never really knew each other before we played volleyball. So is there something in the water there that just produces elite-level <laughs> volleyball players, or what? I mean, uh, there's got to be something. <laughs> I think it's a little random. Richmond Hill isn't known for their volleyball, so uh, it's pretty hilarious and random. And despite living, uh, you know, just two blocks away from one another, uh, you guys had never played together before? Yeah, no, this was our first year. I knew he always had the potential, but uh, after watching him play at the beginning of this year, I knew uh, that potential turned to uh, execution. And, uh, you know, I'm excited that we're together finally. And, uh, I mean, talk about chemistry, because sometimes it takes years to develop with... Uh, with the team, but you guys seem to have it right off the start. Yeah, Josh is a real easy player to get along with and to play with, so, I mean, chemistry right from the start, you know, don't have to work too hard at it with him. And uh, talk to me a little bit about the personalities, because from, uh, you know, speaking to you, Josh, before, and, and, you know, watching both of you play, it seemed like very competitive, very driven and focused, more laissez-faire, not saying you weren't focused, but a little more laid back. Yeah, for sure. I think I was his style when I was his age, and now, you know, I have to be more efficient. So I want to go as hard as he can, but i got to pick my battles a little bit more and use my anticipation kind of to, uh, you know, be more energy efficient. What's on tap for the celebration? I think we're going to go out and hit the COG bar tonight. Yeah. COG? Have a couple beers. We've been eyeing it down all weekend, so now that's going to probably be the best-tasting Bud Light I've ever had. <laughs> 
Congrats, guys. Congrats, guys. That was amazing. Hey, go enjoy. Enjoy. Amazing. Hey, for Shaw TV, we've wrapped up here. Men's Volleyball Championships, Women's Volleyball Championships. What a great display of elite volleyball here at Center of Gravity. And for Shaw TV, we'll see you next time.